Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to make a video about something that I've wanted to share way before I wanted to put it on YouTube. I wanted to tell the story to others about how I got into medical school without taking the MCAT. So for most of you who are new viewers, I'm going to Cambridge University this year for my master's in epidemiology. So yeah, I got into medical school and they actually let me defer acceptance for a year so I could get my master's. So the way everything turned out, I mean, I've been really lucky for sure. So you might be thinking, how is this possible? So to break down the video, um, I'm going to overview what this early acceptance program I got into is, and then I'll talk about what were some of the things I did, I think convinced uh, the medical school to accept me. I've included some timestamps below, uh, so feel free to skip around to whatever interests you most. So the medical school that I got into was the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. It's the affiliated medical school of the Mount Sinai Health System in New York City, which is one of the largest in the New York metropolitan area. And in 2018, Mount Sinai accepted 140 students from more than 6,100 applicants. So first I want to say that getting into this school has been an absolute blessing. I'm so lucky to have gotten into such a, such a good medical school, such a competitive medical school, with the help of my friends, my family, and my professors. And what really made this opportunity possible is a relatively new initiative called FlexMed. FlexMed was formerly a program uh, known as HUMED, which stood for Humanities and Medicine. And the objective of this program was basically to encourage college students majoring in non-STEM fields to apply to medicine. The rationale for this was to introduce new and unique perspectives to medicine and healthcare. So before you would have, for example, um, sociology majors who could bring a societal view of healthcare to the table. But in recent years, FlexMed became a program in which any student in any major could apply. And the goal of FlexMed is something that I wholeheartedly believe should be the standard of pre-med education. Basically, FlexMed is designed to allow students to be unencumbered by traditional constraints of course requirements or the MCAT and develop their other interests and passions. So how did I get in? Well, first it was luck. Um, but so I'll go over the first thing that I think um, helped me get into this program. Um, one of the first things that I think is under consideration in any medical school application, it's your grades and your test scores. So because FlexMed doesn't require you to take the MCAT, um, they have to look for other standardized metrics of, of accomplishment or, or academic achievement. Um, so they look at your high school GPA, your college GPA at the time of application, and your SAT score, your high school SAT score. So for me, um, my high school GPA uh, was a 3.98 out of 4. I took a couple of uh, AP and IB courses. Um, my SAT score was a 2360 out of 2400. This was the old SAT. Um, and the breakdown for that was um, an 800 on critical reading, a 790 on writing, and a 770 on math. Uh, my college grades um, were pretty good. At the time of application, um, I had a 3.83 GPA, and uh, to break that down, um, that was a 4.0 science GPA and a 3.7 something non-science GPA. So moving on from things like test scores and grades and things like that, um, one of the th things that I personally thought was the most important aspect for consideration to this program was the ability for candidates to demonstrate initiative. And this goes back to what I was alluding to before with um, what I thought were some key differences between the application process to FlexMed versus the application process um, to any other medical school, is that when you're applying as a sophomore, no one's expecting you to have accomplished a lot already. And that's valid because you're a sophomore in college, you're 19, you haven't had as much experience as um, you would if you were to apply normally, um, which is you know either right after you graduate from college or you spend a couple years doing work or, or other things after college and then apply. You just don't have that same amount of time to or that same depth of activities or you know following your interests so what they're looking for are more intangible characteristics and one of these intangible characteristics is initiative and i think how they look for initiative is through the form of 
uh, personal projects. They want to see that you're doing something with your time other than what's um, demanded or required of you. So I won't go into too much detail about uh, my personal projects and I'll maybe make another video if you guys are interested, but I'll give, an, I'll give a quick example of one of my personal projects. And that was something I made called the Intrinsic Motivation Measurement Scale. Um, the scale was based off of Angela Duxworth's book, Grit, The Power of Perseverance and Passion. And basically, I made this scale because I was conflicted about what activities to do in college and how best to spend my time. Um, and the scale basically ranks your activities and suggests whether you are uh, likely to be intrinsically or extrinsically motivated to do these with the rationale being that with intrinsic activities, you are more likely to be happy, perform well, do them for longer, etc. Uh, there's a there's a lot of research surrounding this. Um, but yeah, so I, what, what sort of grew out of a personal curiosity turned into this mini project that I spent a good amount of time working on. The next thing, recommendations. Um, I won't talk too much about this because, um, you know, you can only hope that the people you're asking for recommendations you know, really have lots of good things to say about you. Um, the one thing I will mention though is that I I think, and I'm, I'm fairly sure, that my recommenders all noted my initiative. And this will be a common theme throughout this video. It's just demonstrating initiative to, to do things, to learn, follow your curiosities. In terms of my activities, I knew that I wanted to be in a position of making decisions. To clarify, in high school, I was involved in organizations where I really didn't get to do a lot and that made me feel like I was wasting my time or my efforts weren't being valued. So in college, I was really intentional about finding the right organizations that would let me grow into a leader. I'll give brief descriptions of them now, but I may make a video later going into more depth. So the first organization I joined was called Health Bridges, which was an organization that mobilized college students um, who spoke either Spanish or Mandarin to work at a local under-resourced hospital as language interpreters and health insurance advocates. So I think this activity was, was well received by the admissions committee because um, in particular Mount Sinai is located in East Harlem, uh, which is an under-resourced community in New York City. So they have a lot of similar programs and I think that my experiences with Health Bridges really resonated with um, the people who were interviewing me. My second major activity was starting a chapter of a growing nonprofit global health organization called Refresh Bolivia. And I could talk for hours about this because this was definitely my most important activity throughout college. Um, and the amount of personal growth I had was insane. Uh, but Refresh Bolivia is basically a nonprofit dedicated to improving health in under-resourced communities in Cochabamba, Bolivia. And it's run jointly by student leaders from Harvard and from the Claremont Colleges um, alongside our on-the-ground partners. I won't get too much into it in this video, but suffice it to say, I had a lot of real-life adult responsibilities um, directing an international nonprofit, and that was something special that I think not many people got to say that they did. So I immensely enjoyed these activities because I found a lot of intrinsic motivation and being in a leadership capacity meant I naturally had tons of things to talk about and that I was excited to talk about. So I think my overall application was fairly focused, which was pretty reflective of my academic interests at the time. I felt a strong desire to put my energy into health equity work and whatever remaining time I spent pursuing my curiosities in the form of small, uh, small short-term projects. I think what really helped me ultimately was my enthusiasm for all the things that I was doing. I mean, I could talk about all my activities for hours. And again, applicants like me were only 19 at the time, so the program definitely took gambles. And with these types of applications, nothing's ever certain or without randomness. That being said, I realize how lucky I am, and I'll definitely continue putting in the work to learn and become a good doctor one day and give FlexMed a good name. If there's anything to take away from this video, I think the overarching theme was that I took initiative to pursue my curiosities and showed it through what I believed were really cool activities. And I was always enthusiastic about describing these activities, whether it was through my personal essays or the interview. 
If you like these types of videos, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Feel free to also send me a personal message if you have any questions or if there's anything I mentioned in the video that you want me to make a longer video of. Um, but yeah, that's it for today, and I'll see you guys in another video. Peace!